Good evening everybody, today we're back for another deep dive into Buckethead's Pipe Album series with Pipe 64 Aquarium. So let's begin. Woo! Released July 16th, 2014, Pike 64 was one of a handful of pikes released that month, and with a runtime of just over 29 minutes, was one of the shortest pikes of 2014. The five track album kicks off with its title track, Aquarium. The shortest track on the album at just under four minutes, it launches right into heavy rippage, backed by some frantic kick drums. Aquarium is one of those songs that even though it's a fairly enjoyable listen, you might have a hard time recalling some of the riffs by the song's end as they aren't really that memorable. It's not a solid opener and arguably the album's weakest track. Track 2 without form picks up where track 1 left off but has a slightly better flow and hits some good points, especially around the 1 minute 50 mark when it really locks on to an excellent groove. But unfortunately it doesn't stick with the excellent groove and instead goes back to more unremarkable riffage. It's better than track 1 but not by much, and the drums on this track are especially poor, feeling far too computerised to the point of harm in the song. Track 3, Attention Electric Cyclone is next, and from the first few bars of the song, it'll make you think you've somehow switched albums to a far better one. The song immediately locks you in, there's some excellent headbanging riffage throughout, and the drums complement the song and are far better than the previous tracks. It's not a great song, but it's alright and easily the best so far. Next, the album's longest track at just over seven and a half minutes, Beyond the Windmill. Like the previous track, it starts off strong with a memorable and enjoyable riff and utilizes it effectively throughout the track, occasionally changing things up and ending with a subtle guitar solo and kill switch outro. Again, it's not a wow song, but it's all right and the best track so far. concludes with its second longest track, Hopper Feeding Match. Essentially more of the same flow and style as the previous track, it really takes its time to get going, hitting the mark around three and a half minutes in, until the song and album's seven minute conclusion. Along with track four, it's the album's best song, which to be honest, might not be much of a praise at this point, but it's something. Overall, Pike 64 feels really disjointed, it doesn't flow well as an album, and the drums are really all over the place. But even though it starts off fairly weak with its first two tracks, it picks up as the album goes along and has some good points like tracks 4 and 5. None of the songs are even close to being 4 or 5 star songs, and therefore it might not be an album you'll revisit anytime soon. After adding up the rating I gave for each track, it came to exactly 57%, which I categorise as average. And for this pike, and by Buckethead standards, it is. You can find my individual song ratings and breakdown on our website, natanet.com. So what's your rating for Pike 64? 
to work out what percentage you give the album, rate each song out of 5 stars, add up your total, and divide it by the total score possible, which for Pike 64 is 25, then times it by 100. So Buckethead's Aquarium, Sink or Swim.